Once torqued, we can now check for axial side clearance. The Bentley calls for a spec between 2 and 12 thousandths of an inch. So we'll go in with each. Make sure the 2 slips in. And the 12 does not. So we're good. Now with the regular wrench, I'm going to loosen the bolts once again and check the plastic gauge. Just bear in mind that it's not good practice to loosen any bolts with a torque wrench, so swap it over to a regular wrench for this step. Now with the bolts loose, stand them out about a quarter inch here, and then you're going to want to shock it with your hammer to separate. So as you can see here, plastic gauge is flattened out. The Bentley calls for a spec of um, radial clearance on the bearings for new bearings to be between 8 ten thousandths and 28 ten thousandths. So we're going to pull in here and see what we got. We're miking somewhere dead in the center there, between 15 and 20. Looks good. Alright, so once your plastic gauge specs out, you're going to want to clean all the plastic gauge residue off the bearing and the crack journal um, and make sure this is the most important step to now lubricate your bearing shell and I throw a little bit of assembly lube on the crank journal as well and once again ensure that your bearing tangs are lined up set it up for assembly here we're going to go through one more full torque cycle 50 foot-pounds we want to loosen it once again and then torque it one last time 50 foot-pounds all right, now that you got all your pistons in, you're going to want to just clean the deck off here. Just make sure everything's clean and dry for the install of your new head gasket. Um, you're also going to want to inspect the holes for your head bolts here. Just ensure that there's no debris in the bottom of them. If there is, you're just going to want to run a, a thread chaser through and just clean all that stuff out. Um, also make sure that there is no coolant or oil at the base of these holes because it could cause the bolts to hydrolock once you tighten them all the way down completely. Because what happens is you'll send these bolts down into the well and you'll start tightening down on that fluid. That fluid will pressurize and it could in turn crack your block. So just be extra careful. Um, make sure you clean all these holes out extremely well. And you're just going to want to crank your pistons a little bit. Make sure they're not at top dead center. Just so you ensure that none of the valves will hit when you put the head on. And you should be good to go. All right, now you're gonna place your fresh new head gasket right out of the package. Lay it in place, align it with the dowel pins there, and just ensure that the numbers are pointing up. I right, know with the head set in place, I'm just gonna go around in sequence and I'm just gonna lightly hand tighten each bolt. We're going to come back with our torque wrench, set the 30 foot-pounds, and we're going to follow the Bentley torque sequence. One bolt at a time, starting from the center. All right, now that all of our bolts have been torqued and sequenced, the 30 foot-pounds, we're going to follow to the second stage with 90 degree turn of each bolt. Our second stage is complete. We're going to follow up with the third and final stage, an extra 90 degree turn of each bolt in sequence. Here's where you can really feel the stretch of the bolt. Now in the meantime, to keep anything from getting dirty, I'd throw your valve cover back in place and cap it on with a couple nuts. Now before we reinstall the oil pump, I would get in there and remove the suction pipe and try your best with a pick to um, get in here and, and remove as much debris as possible because you can see the kind of stuff the pick digs up. Alright, now that our pump is clean, 
and we've ensured that it spins freely, we're going to want to remove the sprocket on the side of the pump. Also ensure that our two black dowel pins are in position and that they fit nice and snug once in place. Now we're going to lay our baffle plate into place. And we're going to tighten our mount mounting bolts here to 11 foot-pounds. Once we lay our sprocket in place, we'll then tighten the sprocket bolt to 18 foot-pounds. In preparation for our new timing belt, we're going to want to replace our water pump, tighten these bolts to 11 foot-pounds. We're also going to want to replace our entire tensioner assembly here. These two side bolts tighten to 11 foot-pounds and this fitted center bolt in the roller you're going to want to tighten that to 20 foot-pounds. Alright, now with our new parts installed and torqued down, we're going to hold off on the dampener. We're going to wait until our belt is in position because that's going to permit a full swing of this roller here which is going to allow for more slack in our timing belt. So then we're going to lay our timing belt in position. We're going to cover it with the belt guard and then put our crank pulley in place so we have some reference with top dead center. And now you can see, timing belt is in position. Um, our cam sprocket is set to top dead center. That's the first thing you want to do. You have to make sure this is set to top dead center before you spin the crank. That way you know the valves aren't going to interfere with the piston. So first set this to TDC. Slowly spin your crank to TDC. Just going to want to offset it maybe a quarter inch to the left of the mark for now. Because once you put the tensioner in position, it's going to tug on that timing belt and spin your crank a little bit clockwise. So now we're ready to put this into position. And once we got it bolted down, we're ready to pull the pin. All right, we're finally ready to button everything up. We got the crank pulley bolts torqued to 18 foot pounds. Got a new oil filter filled with some fresh oil. Uh, oil feed and drain lines connected to the turbo. Just going to remove the valve cover and oil the motor up. Get the cams wet. Alright, motor oiled up. Got the valve cover back in place and there you have it. Assembled motor ready for install. You are good. You are the best. But you know, shooting wise, I beat the fuck out of you.